Hello, friends, and welcome to Storytime. Today, we're going to be reading the book, Mahalia Jackson, Walking with Kings and Queens. This book is written by Nina Nolan and illustrated by John Hollyfield. So this is the front cover. This is the back cover, and this is the spine. And the spine says, Mahalia Jackson. OK, friends, let's get started. Mahalia Jackson, Walking with Kings and Queens. This is the title page. People might say little Mahalia Jackson was born with nothing, but she had something all right, a voice that was bigger than she was. It was New Orleans and music was everywhere. Blues spilling through windows, jazz pouring outdoors but it was gospel that Mahalia loved. After her mother died, Mahalia was sent to live with her aunt, Duke. Her aunt was very strict, especially with her white glove test on Mahalia's dusting. But singing in church raised her spirits. She felt like a peacock with her feathers all spread out. Does she look a little bit like a peacock in this outfit? In the fourth grade, Mahalia had to leave school to look after her baby cousins. She would drag out the record player and sing along. Her voice settled the babies. People walking by stopped in their tracks to listen. Don't you worry, her Aunt Belle said as Mahalia shucked peas on the front porch. One day you'll walk with kings and queens. How was Mahalia going to walk with kings and queens? She didn't even have shoes. But Aunt Belle had a way of knowing things. Over the next few years, Mahalia kept singing in church, spreading her peacock feathers. And every chance she got, she worked as a maid and saved her money. She kept hearing about people moving to Chicago. Sounded scary. All those gangsters. But people said there were more chances there too. Maybe even a chance to go back to school. When Mahalia was 16, her aunt Hannah visited from Chicago. Wanna come back with me? She asked. Train was leaving in the morning no time to lose. Music had always helped calm Mahalia, but this was a new song. Clickety clack, clickety clack, two days on the train. She was a bundle of nerves. Look how nervous Mahalia was. She had never left her small town and here she was going all the way to Chicago. Everything about Chicago felt strange. It wasn't just the bigness of it or that wind. It was everything. Mahalia could get a coat to warm her outsides, but she'd have to find a church to warm her insides, a church to sing in. She found a church all right and a school too. Things were looking up in Chicago. When Aunt Hannah got sick, Mahalia had to stop school to work. Back to being a maid again. But she kept on singing. A few times, Mahalia went to hear a band play in a nightclub. It wasn't gospel, but the music sure did sound good. But when Grandpa had a heart attack, Mahalia made a promise to God. If you let grandpa get better, I'll never set foot in a nightclub again. Grandpa got better. And that was that. People kept telling Mahalia if she would sing in nightclubs instead of churches, she'd make enough money to quit working as a maid. Those people could say what they wanted, Mahalia knew what she said to God. 
She drove down south, singing in churches. It was for money now, but not much, and only sometimes. Mahalia kept driving on those may blow tires, tires so bald they may blow any minute. No money to fix them. Keep singing and driving. Mahalia's joyful voice lifted people with hope. After she sang in a church, people lined up to join the congregation. Wow, she has such a good voice that people really wanted to go to church just to hear her sing. When she finally had money for a singing lesson, the teacher told her to stop hollering. Maybe he didn't know Psalm 47, but Mahalia did. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of a trumpet. She was going to keep hollering for the Lord. All kinds of people started noticing Mahalia singing, like the man from Decca Records. When she was 25, she made her first gospel record. Back home in New Orleans, they heard her on the jukebox. And in Chicago, she was on the radio. Mahalia sang for many people, as, she, as many people as she could. She knew gospel lifted people up. And when you know something like that, you got to tell it to the world. So she did. She was a guest on celebrity TV shows. When she was 38, she sang in Carnegie Hall. She couldn't believe it. Such a fancy place. She had goosebumps. When she started singing, the audience got goosebumps too. She sang in movies. She sang for presidents and prime ministers, but she never did sing in a nightclub. She performed at the March on Washington right before Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. Mahalia loved those words. I have a dream. Aunt Belle was right. Mahalia was walking with kings and queens. After all, she was a queen herself. The queen of gospel. The end. So this book is called Mahalia Jackson, Walking with Kings and Queens. Thanks for coming to Storytime, friends, and I'll see you next time.